He's been a one, one comedian, Robin Ince, I noticed, said Ricky Gervais has become a pin-up and role model for the alt-right as a result of this, with people jumping on the bandwagon, ah, oh, Ricky likes what we like, etc. Um, what are your thoughts on that, firstly? It's a bit silly for a number of reasons. I mean, you know, uh, taking a part or taking the mick out of um, this one aspect of trans ideology, for example, does not make you all right. I mean, let's not get into it, but we know that the uh, kind of the war between gender critical feminists and trans ideologists is not a kind of it's not reducible to um, bigots and sane people. Yeah, it's very yeah. it's much more complicated. So that's silly in and of its own right. But it's also the case that for many many years now, comedy has been, you know, of a, done by a particular set of people with a particular set of political views and so you know for example there was a time after 2016 where you just couldn't move for comics doing shows about thick brexit voters and and jokes about that and you know so maybe there are some of us who are kind of maybe a little bit glad that the shoe's on the other foot now and some comedians are do are you know broaching into political territory that goes against the grain but i think most people just like it because they think it's funny i mean i i've never been a huge fan of ricky gervais because you know his early stuff was when i was at school and it was um you know all the boys that i was in a band with used to love him and so i sort of took against him but even you have to <laughs> you have to chuckle at this routine but particularly the, the content that I can't repeat because it's too early in the day about um, trans ideology because he's simply stating the obvious um, about that particular issue, you yeah. know, about how people prioritise pronouns over people's concerns about safety. And, uh, you know, and it is funny and he's right. That's what is what the best kind of humour is about, is pushing the boundaries, putting you into an unsafe space where you think, oh, is that too far? And that's inevitably why why we laugh. I mean, that's partly why people laugh at funerals. You you often get the best belly laughs when you're really not meant to be laughing. Yeah. I, the, the argument seems to go, Ella, and I, I don't agree with this, by the way, but... Uh, from what I'm looking at on so, you know, the, the, the oracle of Delphi that is social media, of course, where else you need to go for the definitive answer, um, all seven million answers to any conundrum or issue that comes our way, uh, seems to be that, well, look, what it's done, it's, it's kind of the Robin Ince comment, it's, it's opened the door so that people who want to be unpleasant, for example, the trans people, look at that and they go, oh, there's Ricky Gervais making a joke, he's the bloke from the office, so therefore that's okay, so I can then join in and I can start calling trans people freaks of nature and, you know, they have no right to oxygen, etc. Um, and I'm sure that is true, by the way. I'm sure there are some people who do that. That doesn't mean to say that our response is therefore to cancel the comedy. Well, I'm sure maybe a few people do that, but I think it sort of, it tells you what... Uh, the, the people who are complaining, it tells you something about their view of the public as a whole, which is, you know, the, the normal people do not take their moral cues from comedians. I mean, that's, you know, we go to watch Joe Brands make jokes about being fat and, or, you know, Joan Collins make jo horrible jokes about people, or, you know, or the list, you know, lots of comedians throughout the history of comedy have said very nasty things that yeah, people yeah. laugh at. And we don't take our moral or political cues from them. You know, people learn their sense of morality from, uh, the world around them and from the experiences they have. It's just a really crass idea of people. It's, it's the idea that people are kind of like sheep or chi or like children, like sponges, that we just copy what gets what the last thing that we heard. Yeah. Um, and I think, I, you know, I have more trust in a public to be able to differentiate between things that you hear in a comedy club or on Netflix, watch on television, and the real world, which is the real life of, of um, politics and human interaction. And even Gervais says in his stand-up, um, you know, wh whether you believe it or not, whatever, he says, look, I'm all for trans rights, whatever, this isn't about that, I'm just taking the mick. And actually he kind of, in the beginning bit, he goes into a sort of painstaking explanation as to why, um, you know, using the example of, I think it's women not being funny or something, Thing. Yes. You know that yeah. that you know why irony matters. Why actually you you should be able to differentiate between when someone is sending something up or punching down, whatever you want to call it these days, and and actually having a serious political conversation.